From 2001 through 2005, I had the most exhilarating job on this planet. I was a WWE superstar. The WWE allowed me to see all 50 states, go to 11 foreign countries, and have experiences that I would have never gotten if not in that line of work. But that does come with a few regrets. I in no way, shape, or form blame the WWE for any anything, any negative that's ever came my way. I believe every man has to own his own baggage. I do just that. So this is the list of my 10 regrets while in the WWE and spoiler alert, number one actually still haunts me to this day, still keeps me up and to me is the reason I was let go in 2005. So make sure you stick around for that. Number 10, taking a limo to the arena of my first match ever. <laughs> what I would later find, and a big misconception about the wrestling world, because Ric Flair's always talked about limo ride and jet flying, so everyone thinks the WWE pays for these limos and jets. They do not. So, when they told me, coming off my Tough Enough win, that the following week I was gonna be my debut match on SmackDown, I was a little bit, well, I was a lot a bit nervous, but I knew they were gonna handle my, uh, my travel. And on this day, <laughs> they overdid themselves. They told me I would be flying out of DC, you know, about an hour, two hours from my house, to where the arena was. We had a 1 p.m. You know, time that we had to be at the arena meaning all the boys were already at the arena. So when it's 2.30 and my limo is pulling, pulling up, <laughs> dropping me off, dropping up the kid that has not paid a single due in the business, let's just say that wasn't gonna sit well with the boys in the back. I walk in, find Taz. Taz is making small talk with me, not only because me and him are gonna be wrestling later that night, but mostly because Taz took ownership. He was one of my trainers and a great trainer, he was. But he wanted to protect me. He asked me nonchalantly, just making small talk, so maybe how'd you get here? And I say, oh. And they had a limo for me, you know, because I didn't think I was doing anything wrong. Hell, to me, everyone took limos to the arena. Taz took a limo to the arena. He grabs me by the arm, pulls me off to the side, and informs me immediately, do not tell a soul you took a limo here. And in fact, if they ever offer you another limo, deny it. Don't you dare take it, take a cab. Lesson learned, a lesson, and a mistake. I never made again. Number nine, and Vince was as mad at me over this one as I had ever seen him. I had one move and one move only, and I admit it, you know, I wasn't the best technical wrestler, but, man, I could throw a drop kick. And it quickly became apparent that that was gonna be my move. Now, there's other guys that throw great drop kicks, Randy Orton, Bob Holly, but it was the one thing that from day one, I still remember when we started doing drop kicks in Tough Enough, Al Snow looked at me and he said, that's you, that's your move. So it was the one move that I knew in every match I had to get it in because every wrestler knows you gotta get your in. So going into WrestleMania 18, I was wrestling Goldust. I think Goldust and I had about, I think it was six to eight minutes for the entire match. Now that's with entrances, so definitely not much time to, to have to actually wrestle. And during the match, my big spot was getting my trash can in. Now, not only did they want me to hit a trash can, something that's twice the size of Undertaker's back, but they painted the damn thing gold for me too to make it an even bigger target. I remember Goldust picks the trash can up and I was supposed to drop kick and it was one of those uh, one of those thin aluminum trash cans. So the idea was when I kicked it, it would completely cave in, look amazing, gold dust would take the bump. So I go to do the spot, <laughs> jumped, and completely missed, whiffed the entire trash can. The moment I got behind Gorilla, Vince <laughs> is irate. He's yelling at me and I'll never forget it. He says, Maven, you have one move and you effed that one up. <laughs> now with my number eight regret, it's gonna, gonna get a little bit more serious. My mom was battling uh, cancer 
when I got into the business. She was diagnosed with a you know a rare type of bone cancer in 2001, actually before I left for Tough Enough. She ended up passing in 2004. The one good thing that I'm eternally grateful and I thank the good Lord for every day is she was truly able to to live through me and to watch her son live out his dream. We never had a lot of money and money was always tight, but my mom did everything to make make sure I, I never whipped for anything. My mom would clean teeth. She was a dental hygienist. She would clean teeth during the day and bag groceries at night and it still it still chokes me up to this day thinking it. You know, thinking about it. I remember she was able to go on and it what turned out to be her her very last girls outing and a girls trip uh, to uh, to Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And it it was the best feeling in the world being able to hand her a few thousand dollars and telling telling her you don't have you don't have to worry about anything on this trip. I will take care of everything. She came back beaming and she was so happy and she informed me that her next trip would be her very first trip to New York, to which I told her, I got it. I will pay for everything. Unfortunately, that trip just never came. She passed away in 04 and I was never able to repay the debt repay the love that she showed me. My number eight regret is I just, I'm sad that she wasn't able to share in the wealth and the, the money that I was finally able to make after all those years. And my number seven regret, it's one that I'm actually still feeling to this day. Now I'm gonna take you back to my time in Tough Enough and the Hardy Boys and Lita. They told us that our body is never gonna feel any better than it did at that moment. And truthfully, they were right. Some of the guys in the back and in the locker room, I know Randy was really big on getting massages. He was really big on, you know, just making sure that he was taking care of his body because obviously our bodies are, you know, they're our number one tool. They're our number one asset. After 23 years in the wrestling business, I can tell you, I wish, and my number seven regret is that I would have taken a little bit better care of my body. I wish I would have set up weekly masseuses. I wish I would have set up weekly chiropractor trips. I just wish I would have invested in my number one tool, my body, because then maybe now I wouldn't feel like I was in a car wreck each and every day. Now my number six regret, something that probably would have catapulted my career forward would have definitely given me an early start. In the wrestling business, amateur wrestlers are called shooters. <laughs> and you take guys like Kurt Angle, you take Shelton Benjamin, Brock Lesnar, guys with that amateur wrestling background. They are in, they have such an advantage over everyone else. I remember Shelton, and Shelton Benjamin is bar none, the best athlete I've ever been around in front of and had the pleasure of wrestling. We were messing around in the ring before uh, a live event and Shelton gets in the ring and lays down flat on his, on his face and on his stomach, arms straight out, legs straight out. And Shelton challenged me to getting him rolled over on his back. Now at this time, I weighed probably 240 pounds. I was decently strong. I was not, I was not a pushover. And for the life of me, I could not move Shelton one inch against his will. Shelton's amateur wrestling background has a lot to say about that. My number six regret, not having an amateur wrestling background when I decided to go into the business. For my number five regret, I'm reminded of each and every time I go to an autograph signing. As a matter of fact, I remember going to see my buddy Devon, and Devon's got old belts, Devon's got action figures, Devon's got pictures with him and Bubba, Mr. T. Or every time I do an autograph signing and people come up and they have, you know, things I forgot I even did, or they might have action figures for me to sign. And if you walk into my house, 
right now, you're not going to find one thing that says, I used to be a professional wrestler. I've just never been a collector. It's just a passion that I never had. The trophy I got for winning Tough Enough, it never even made it to my house. But with age, we all get reminded of things that we've lost and we've all get reminded of you know, just our past. And sometimes it's good to have that connection with the past. Now my number four regret is, and if you're not familiar with the term Mark, a Mark is a wrestling fan. All of us are Marks in some way. And as a Mark, as a fan, you know, we have people that we maybe watched, maybe were fans of, maybe idolized, maybe even, you know, looked up to. Now I've talked about you know, my interaction, my very first interaction with Hulk Hogan. And I still, to this day, see Kevin Nash at signings. And I go back and I think of my very first time meeting Scott Hall and Razor Ramon and remembering just how, you know, how in awe I was, you know, thinking, man, this is, this is pretty cool. Unfortunately, you know, Creative never, you know, saw saw fit to have our paths cross. And you know, as Father Time wins, as he <laughs> defeats us all, you realize, yeah, you know, I'm never gonna have that opportunity. I'm never gonna have the opportunity to get in the ring with a uh, Hogan, with a uh, Kevin Nash, and obviously, you know, we've lost Scott. So definitely one of the regrets, my number four regret, not being able to work with legendary guys like Hogan, Nash and Scott Hall. Now, number three on the list, and I'm, I'm already warning you, go ahead, get up, go grab, grab the Kleenexes because I'm telling you, the last, uh, the last two, they get pretty serious. But growing up in Virginia, I think I was 12 years old before I laid eyes on the ocean for the first time. I obviously was not well traveled growing up and probably by the time I graduated high school, I had maybe been to five different states, all bordering Virginia. Fast forward a few years, being in the WWE, and I want to say by the time I was there for three years, I had already seen, I think around 40 different states, and by the time I concluded my career, I had been to all 50 states and seen 11 different countries. Someone will always ask me, Maven, have you been to so-and-so? I will say, yes, I've been there. They will say, what was it like? And I'll say, I have no clue. I only saw the arena, the airport, and my hotel. Why? Because I was the idiot that did not take advantage of the places that we went. And as a matter of fact, the only time I did take advantage of those cultural opportunities was doing things like smack down your vote with JBL or the time the WWE you know, sent me and Hurricane to the White House. Molly Holly used to actually, wherever we were, she would make it a point before we had to be at the arena. She'd be up and out seeing all the sights because, hey, we had a free ticket to wherever we were. My number three regret is not taking advantage of all that culture the WWE put in front of my face. And I was just a young and dumb kid and all I wanted to do was wrestle, sleep, and party. <laughs> So my number two regret during my time in the WWE, and disclaimer, I in no way, in no way blame the WWE at all. My number two regret is allowing my demons to get the better of me. I still remember the, uh, the very first, the very first painkiller I ever took. It was for a broken finger, a finger that, that I broke wrestling Bob Holly. You find you might take one pill and that helps. There's the assistance you're looking for. Well, before you know it, one has led to two and two's led to four, four's led to eight. You can do the math, you know where that is going. Eventually, you know, everything, if left unchecked, gets out of control. And for me, those consequences led to, in 2012, led to an actual arrest. I had been with HSN, the Home Shopping Network, for almost five years at that point. Great job. I was their sports, you know, special guest host, and I was making a good, good income from it. And when I found myself at my lowest at the time of my arrest for those painkillers, 
they cut the cord. They immediately let me go. They didn't offer anything. But who did? The WWE. They came back, they offered help. I moved up to New York in 2013 with literally all my possessions fitting in the back of my truck. I had a friend contact me who offered to put me, you know, offered to let me work the door of his bar. And I'll tell you, that's a humbling experience going from live programming, going from two worldwide reality shows to working as a bouncer in New York. And for my number one regret of my time in the WWE, and I know what a lot of you are saying, Maven, how is that? How is the last regret not your number one regret? You, you lost so much. Here's why. I can do something about my demons. I can do something. I can actively, you know, try to, to try to battle that. For my number one regret, the die is cast. There is absolutely nothing, and I mean nothing, I'm able to do about it. Johnny Ace used to tell me all the time, Maven, get out to the ring. Work with Stevie Richards, work with Fit, work with Arn, get better. And what he was telling me was, get out to the ring and work on your craft. When we got to the arena at one o'clock for a nine o'clock <laughs> raw taping, they had the ring set up for the entire day. Now, why did they do that? Obviously, because guys would be out there you know, going over their match, getting ready for the, the show later that night. But they also had it out there for teaching purposes. Guys could take advantage, guys could work on new moves, guys could get out there, roll around, break a sweat, get better at what they were doing. If you were, you know, maybe there was a move that you were interested in, in you know, doing or, or adding to your arsenal, that was the time to get out there to do it. The ring was in essence like a campfire where people just congregated. Now, I'm, I'm not an excuse guy. Excuses are the tools of the weak and incompetent, so I'm not gonna offer any. It was a mistake on my part, the fact that I, I didn't go and I didn't follow through on what Johnny was, was telling me to do. I didn't know if I had the skill to, to be in this business. I didn't know if I had the charisma. I didn't know if I had the ability to talk on the level that it requires to be in the wrestling business. I didn't know if I had the, uh, the physicality to be in it. But what I did know was you couldn't break me. And I promised myself that if the wrestling business did not work out, it was not gonna be due to a lack of effort. We you know, flew back from a live event. I would fly home on Tuesday. My, my, uh, of my flight would always land in Charlottesville. And I had an hour drive from Charlottesville to Harrisonburg where I lived. And probably midway through that flight, I get a call from Johnny Ace. And when you get a call from Johnny Ace on a non-TV day, it is not good news he's telling you. I choked up the minute he, I saw his, his number come across because I kind of had in, my, in, in the back of my head what he was calling about. I asked him, hey, Johnny, Honestly, what's the reason they're letting me go? Because I don't know if WWE left anything on the table with me. Hell, I get reminded by the by you guys in the comments all the time. I was, you know, I, I wasn't even a mid Carter. So sure, okay, that's fine. Um, I know I wasn't the best wrestler ever, and <laughs> if you think I wasn't even a mid Carter, I'm fine with that. But what I'm not fine with is what Johnny told me. He told me, Maven, I've told you for years now, get out to that ring, you know, make yourself better, work on your craft. And it literally, it's tough to deal with knowing that I lost such an amazing job. It's such an amazing opportunity because I didn't give 100%. I just hate knowing that I left something on the table. And I hate knowing that someone let me go and, and said that we, we want no more to do with him and there was more that I had in the chamber. That's easily why my number one regret during my time in the WWE is I was not out at that ring each and every week learning from the legends, learning and making myself better. Now, if you're interested and want to hear more about the day I got released from the WWE, click the video above.